and what they used to call it, the Prince... The, the Duke of Edinburgh. The Duke of Edinburgh, and they had a box there, and they had to prove that they'd gone there by chalking it. Okay. So they had to photograph and um, they had to chalk yeah. and photograph. So many years ago, Alan Knight was the Duke of um, <coughs> So, because, you know, uh, it's just, it, it, it sort of infuriates you that, you know, people do do things to these without um, any sense of, of how they might endanger them. So, so, yeah, you've got those ones. If you go to the, the night ones, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Day night comparison, yeah. or just, just the just night ones, yeah. And I'll finish those. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We'd say we just say that. Go on. So, with these, um, these were taken just a few days ago. Um, from my point of view, uh, it's about the place, it's also about the imagery. Um, sometimes the imagery is kangaroos or spirit figures or eating tracks or weapons, goannas, dogs, there's a whole range of imagery there. Um, but it's also about where the place is and what grows around it. And I think what you were saying about the whole big picture of, you know, people were in this area. It's a very difficult country to live in. It's quite dry. Um, I imagine sort of trying to, to gather food and, and exist in this country was, was pretty tough going. I love being there. It's just the most amazing thing. And so the photographs that there's one thing about documentation, but there's another thing about giving some sort of sense of, you know, connection to the landscape. And um, sunset, of course, is camper away hello there um, to Mount Yango that's in the background. So Yango is the centre point. Um, the story goes from the army stepping onto the earth and walking through the landscape and stepping back into the heavens. I think that's the way it goes. Many people have told me the same sort of story. Um, all these rocks tend to face Yango, and of course there's the big footprints that represent Yango. We're walking through the buckets. They're also there. The stars, the heavens. Uh, the next thing that I'd like to try to do, and like we're trying to do, is to photograph that have the star trails there as well, at the same time, because now the digital age is with us, it's a lot easier for us to do that and then have the rocks. This site here is my most favourite site in the whole world and when we, I had to go and find it again because I hadn't been to a lot of these sites for a long time, um, I thought maybe I couldn't find it. So I came up to this rock, you couldn't see a single thing on it and so we came back at night and shone the lights across it and they're all going, hey, here we are, we're still here, you know. Nine little boys all in a circle, all dancing and um, there's such joy in that. It's a very small site and again, the faces are... You can see the difference in the painting as well. Um, yeah, so this is torchlight sort of shone across and Alan was operating the camera and I was doing all the filling lighting work, trying to make the figure. So if you move around, you know, you can get this line maybe showing up and then coming around this way and making this one show up. It's not a curvy rock. Um, and then sort of, you know, doing the backgrounds with filling light as well. So you're sort of in the bush painting. Um, it's 30 light. seconds and each one. Make it. Uh, and, and years ago when I was doing it, I was doing it with, with uh, flash, so filling flash. So I'd be hiding behind trees, trying to flash trees in, and then most of the exposures would take at least, you know, like 20 minutes then. So this is a lot easier, and I, I get some sort of good results. But they are, they're just joyous, and I think it's wonderful that, you know, I think you're thinking the same thing as I'm thinking. Um, I've had discussions already with Lord Tutor about this because it's very important for me that any any involvement with this country um, needs to have um, the consultation and engagement and conversation ongoing with Aboriginal people um, because it's very interesting to go to one of these sites, for instance, with Aboriginal kids. Um, and then I'm the person that's sort of trying to explain what they're about. That's not my role, you know. It needs to be from someone's country and they need to be talking about their own cultural links. I'm Australian, I certainly see this as my place too. And, you know, I embrace it and it's that community engagement that you're talking about, trying to get people to talk passionately about this and also to pass it on to the next generation. <coughs> this is my ultimate aim. 
younger people get involved. So that's all I want to say. Thank you.